Natural Disasters headline today's show as we wrap up the first full week of May. I'm Carl Azus. Right now, there are seven wildfires burning in the U.S. state of New Mexico. The National Interagency Fire Center says that's the most in any state. And while seven might not seem like a huge number in a state that sees hundreds of wildfires every year, the largest one is the second biggest New Mexico has had in decades. More than 170 homes have been destroyed in the northern part of the state. Thousands of other houses have been evacuated. And if this largest fire, the Hermit's Peak Calf Canyon fire, continues to grow, it could threaten more than 15,000 homes in the days ahead. Earlier this week, NASA reported that the blaze was 20% contained, meaning firefighters had blocked it from spreading over one-fifth of the total area it covered. But local governments said they didn't think authorities would have complete control of the fire anytime soon. Like other parts of the American West, New Mexico has been experiencing a severe drought. It's affected almost 99% of the state, according to the U.S. Drought Monitor. That makes fire conditions worse. Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham asked the federal government to declare a disaster in New Mexico. President Joe Biden did that. What it means is that government help in the form of money and recovery assistance has been sped up to the state. Governor Grisham said New Mexico has emergency funds of its own to fight the fires, but that it's not enough. According to the National Weather Service, the average number of acres that wildfires burn in New Mexico each year is around 300,000. That's about how much has burned so far in this year's fire season. 10 Second Trivia Which of these U.S. states is located in Tornado Alley, Utah, South Dakota, Wyoming, or Michigan? Though tornadoes have formed in every state, South Dakota is part of the region nicknamed Tornado Alley. There are different definitions for Tornado Alley. It's supposed to describe an area where tornadoes commonly occur in America, but the federal government says the threat of these storms actually moves around the country depending on the time of year. One thing that's not disputed about Tornado Alley is that Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas are in it. This twister was recorded a week ago in Kansas, and a line of storms that moved across the southern U.S. this week spawned several reported tornadoes in Texas and Oklahoma. Buildings were torn apart. A resident of Oklahoma who was interviewed by the Weather Channel said some structures and houses were completely blown away. Thankfully, no deaths or injuries were reported, but the system didn't just cause tornadoes, it also brought flooding into parts of Arkansas, Kansas, Oklahoma, and Missouri, along with the need for numerous water rescues, according to the National Weather Service. Forecasters said some areas of Arkansas and Louisiana were at risk for severe storms Thursday as this system moved east. Georgia, North Carolina, and Virginia could see storms on Friday. The United States is said to have the most violent weather in the world, and tornadoes are a big part of that. Technically, a tornado is just a violent rotating column of air coming out of the bottom of a thunderstorm. But it takes a lot to get that violently rotating column to come out. All you need for a tornado really to form, though, are thunderstorms and a jet stream. That jet stream's aloft, it makes the energy. If you have moisture at the surface, dry air, cold air, pushing that moisture up, you can get a tornado to form in any state. Those days where all the ingredients combined, you get the humidity, you get the dry air, you get the jet stream, you get upper energy in the jet stream, you get winds turning as you go aloft. The higher you go, the winds actually change direction. That can cause storms, th those things all cause storms to exist and get big. Those are the ingredients that cause a big tornado day. So now the EF scale, enhanced Fujita scale, starts at zero, goes only to five, and anything above 200 miles per hour is considered an EF5 tornado. If you have a zero, you're gonna lose shingles. A one, you may lose a couple of boards on the roof. A two, you'll lose all the windows and maybe even a wall. A three, EF3, you will lose a couple of walls on the outside, but there will still be a part of the home standing. An F4, most of the home is gone, but you'll still see the refrigerator, you'll still see a closet, and you'll still see the bathroom. An EF5, you cannot find the house. It's completely gone. We don't know how big that Fujita scale will be, how big that tornado will be, literally until after we look at the damage. We have this, this almost this triangulation that no other country in the world, no region in the world has. We have the Rocky Mountains to our west. 
We have the Gulf of Mexico in our south. We have Canada and very cold air masses coming down from the north. All of those things combined make Tornado Alley, typically the plains. Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska, all the way to Chicago, as far south as the southeast, including Georgia and Alabama. That's basically the new or the bigger Tornado Alley. The greatest threat of a tornado is being hit by something that the tornado is moving. If you're outside or if you're not protected inside, if you get hit by a 140 mile per hour 2x4, you're going to be killed. So you need to be inside on the lowest level, somewhere in the middle of the home, away from windows. When you hear the word warning and you hear your county, that's when you need to take cover. When you hear the word watch, that means something might happen today. Let's have a plan. When you hear the word warning, it's too late to make a plan. You need to already have the plan. Warning's the long word, it's the bad one. Among the jobs you might not think could be done by robots, manicures. The nail care industry in the United States is worth more than $8 billion a year. Could a robotic newcomer that offers a lot less conversation and interaction change the way people get their nails done? It's not exactly a cure for getting manicures. Robot nails. It's a robo-manicure. The robot doesn't expect tips. Instead of the buzz of conversation, there's the whirring noise of the robot. A company named Clockwork debuted two robots at a pop-up store in San Francisco recently. The robot takes a 3D photo of each nail, then paints it. Says one of the first customers. For $8, I'm happy to have a robot do a much better job than I could do. Posted one commenter, so I wouldn't have to make awkward conversation? Love it. But others were worried. This is kind of sad. I love my nail lady. She works so hard for her business. Clockwork's co-founder says what they do is different from salons. Quick serve beauty is what we call it. We are going to be the express uh, beauty experience. Uh, versus, you know, the artistry and the relaxation of a nail salon. Eventually, they hope to put the nail robots in airports, malls, and gyms. Another company is working on a similar device for home use, selling for 400 bucks. The robo manicure caused one commenter to post, I would be terrified it would eat my fingers. And the reality is that the machine is very safe. No one has ever been hurt by it. Though they have a jokey nickname. We call it Frankie, which is short for Frankenstein. What can't Frankie do? No clipping, no filing, no cutting cuticles. Forget comparisons to. Barbie Digital Nail Printer. Have made print designs, but it can't paint. And for eight to ten bucks a manicure, Frankenstein's creators are hoping customers say, I'll be back. Genimos, CNN, Woo. New York. Some may say it's loony la, some might call it beautiful. To let a robot box detox nails right down to the cuticle. It's an edgy concept leaving many who are picky unimpressed from epithelium down to the hyponychium. But when it comes to manicures, if you've tried and failed, it might be thought from those polished clips that that nail machine might nail it. Fridays are awesome. We've got Union Grove High School watching today from McDonough, Georgia. It's great to see you. Our YouTube channel is the one and only place we look for your shout out requests. I'm Carl Azus.